And that seems to be something that, that is consistent throughout a lot of these cases uh, in terms of sexual abuse. It seems as though when these pastors or bishops or, or members of the clergy or those in church leadership get in trouble, the males, oftentimes it's women who come to their bat, come to their defense, uh, raise money for them, uh, speak out vehemently for for them. Uh, why is it so many women who are willing to speak up for pastors and clergy who are accused of sexual abuse, oftentimes against women? Right, right. That's uh, that's something that is, um, you know, I'm still scratching my head about. Um, and, I, and I know in this case with uh, Bishop Charles Brown. Um, the the report that I read said that there were numerous women at his uh, hearing, um, and um, one of the things I think with a, I mean with a predator who is a pastor, and um, again I, I'm only going on reports that uh, for public reports in terms of Charles Brown, and so my mm-hmm. comments are based on these reports. Anyone who wants to read these reports can go to Kojic Abuse Watch or report dot com, and we generally have all of them linked or archived somewhere. So th- those that's where my point of reference is from. But when a pastor comes into a church, and if his, you know, if he, and I don't know if these people start out like this, brother uh, DJ. I, I want to say that I, I don't know if they start out wicked. I don't know that. You know, I would like to think that they don't start that way, but some. Way along the, somewhere along the line, they become corrupted with power, and mm. they become corrupt by this um, unfettered access to people, and having people uh, move at their beck and whim. Those things they really can mess your mind up if you are not if you don't have the character to to be in that place. But I think that uh, just from my own experience, it looks like sometimes they. Uh, the first person they have to quote get on their side is the women, you know, and um, and I think that's tragic because you know the women are churches are you know have a larger female population, and so this man becomes sometimes the alpha male uh, of the congregation. And I noticed that in churches, I and I really I detest this because even the sermons are sermons are feminized. You know, they it's always baby and honey and uh, sweetheart and and if you're a man sitting there, you're like, well, I know he ain't talking to me, so what's up with this? You know, it's always it seems like it's directed at women to to stroke them to to uh, you know condition them. You know, maybe something's already going on. I don't know. Maybe something's already going on, and and you know that if you got those women in your corner. Uh, pretty much, you know, they're going to be the ones to raise the money, like you said, and support you vocally. And it has, it has been the case uh, quite a number of times. Um, and, and you know, this is what these folk want. They want somebody to, you know, throw up the smoke screen to make it seem like, you know, hey, this is a good man. You know, this man, he came and prayed for my my daughter when she was sick. This man visited me when I was in the hospital. You know, and, and people can do that. You know, as a matter of fact, they like I said, they cultivate this sort of benevolent image so that you would never think that they were doing the other things that they were doing, uh, that they've been accused of doing. And so this is where the controversy arises because people say, oh, he's a good man. But other people know truth. They know a side of this person that is not what you see up in church on Sunday. So exactly. you have this sort of back and forth. Uh, controversy with people, and it sometimes muddies the muddies the water to the degree that uh, you really don't know what's going on uh, in these cases. And that's and 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 you're exactly right. And and what we oftentimes describe that is in a, in a term we call psychological pimping, where you take control of a person's mind first, and and mm-hmm. oftentimes it's a black woman. You play those psychological games with that person almost and it's almost a type of seduction where the the, the woman yeah. knows that this person is not 
her husband, but yet he he positions himself to be that foremost male authority in her life. Oftentimes, even if she is married, you even know, so which that is right. that yeah yeah even if she is married, and oftentimes you know just just like you mentioned, if she is married or if she's in a relationship, how does the brother or how does the man deal with that, where he has this other man? who basically has control over his wife's mind. How does he yeah. how does he uh you know fight against that? And when he knows on Sunday she's going come hell or high water, she's going to church Sunday. You know, mm-hmm. and if there's something that he may want to do outside of the church, of course she's not with it. So it's that emotional, psychological, spiritual tug of war that is caused by this preacher playing these psychological games oftentimes with women. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, and I think that's uh, a lot of what keeps people, keeps men away from churches is because they know that this this alpha male pimp game is going on. And, um, you know, so what, what chance do they stand in there when you are relegated to just a troublemaker or you don't want to, quote, get with the vision? because somebody's trying to eye, eye your wife down or you know that they're playing psychological games to gain her trust. And and trust me, I have heard and know personally of horror stories just like that. So this ain't something we're pulling out of thin air talking about. Uh, this is, this, these things go on, uh, you know, all the time in these type of churches. Now, again, I want to sort of balance it by saying that not all churches are like this. You know, I don't know the percentage because ain't nobody ever done no survey to tell us any differently. Um, And so generally people have this bad view of churches because of issues with new birth or things that happen like with new birth or Charles Brown and different other situations that we heard across the country. People get this general negative view of the church, and it doesn't seem like a lot of people within the church system are trying to correct it. You know, um, you know, for folks to say, well, hey, I don't do that. Well, if you got influence and you know that your partner is doing it, you know, you need to publicly correct him or else you're just as guilty because you know exactly. what he's doing, but you're not saying nothing. So so I don't, I don't, uh, I don't accept that, hey, it's not me thing or this hands-off situation. Are we going to be a community or are we going to all play dumb when somebody gets taken advantage of and we try to CYA it? You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I, I don't think that's a good thing. But but certainly a, a man, you know, personally I would say, hey brother, get your get your wife out that church, man. You know, if you if you want to be in a church, find a church, ask some hard questions before you join. Okay, don't be afraid to ask hard questions to the preacher. You know, find out. It's almost like a marriage to me. You know, you can go on that honeymoon dating phase where you just go to church because. Man, he preached so good, or I like the way the choir sing. Don't be fooled, okay? Don't be fooled, because if you expect to receive uh, answers that satisfy you. 